Hello everyone, welcome to my Monster Hunter Wilds trailer analysis. My name is Roan, and I'll be going through the trailer expressing my points and interests. I'm sure most of you have already seen the trailer by now, um, and are just as eager as I am for all the new info. So let's just kind of take a dive and break down what we notice in this trailer. First, let's talk about the end of the trailer. That incredible shot of the world that we're going to be exploring in 2025. Like, holy shit, look at this. This is crazy looking. Open world Monster Hunter. Like, think about that for a moment. Open world Monster Hunter. Like, just from the end of this trailer alone, there was so much going on in the world. Like, the distance between the hunter and the monsters below. Like, we literally just saw them earlier running around together against those big bear-like things. The rocky like canyon here the crystal formations in the back like it's freaking huge look at how much there is just in this single shot alone i know i know open world monster hunter that sounds too big like oh my god we're used to zone by zone now in world you know it kind of looks like this but seriously think about it for a moment it might not be that crazy of a possibility considering what they already gave us like this is Probably the next big step for Monster Hunter. Hell, look at these spires to gauge distance. Like, there's spires all over this, this map right now. Those are probably things that are traversable. We can go to each spire. Who knows what's that that's going to unlock? Is that going to give us like a bird's eye view thing like in some other games? Or is this maybe just like a weird little checkpoint thing? Who, who knows? Not to mention the hills over on the far left here that definitely look like we can pass through them. Like... You know, it's it's just a shot of this region, but it looks pretty big. And who knows even what's behind the hunter at this point? And so far, we are seeing in this video like a mix of the desert, a mix of a, like savanna. We got rocky canyon-like terrain here at the end as well. I'm I'm pretty sure that there's going to be at least two other biomes that we're going to be seeing in future videos, and, and just in this game in general, right? Monster Hunter has never been without at least three biomes being present in the initial installment of the game, so we're definitely not seeing everything just here in this video. Just think about it. Think of the map just in the New World alone. You know, you have to select a quest or an expedition and you can go there. The maps are pretty huge, but imagine just going to the region and then you can just run wherever you want to, just seamlessly going through the world. It's insane, right? Like, it'll be pretty long travels, but that's where our feathery buddy here comes in. It's insane, we went from zone by zone loading screens for the first four generations of Monster Hunter to a beautiful no loading screen world that's in Monster Hunter World. That literally gave us the first glimpse of like what an open world map would feel like when we're in it, how immersive everything is. And even if it isn't fully open world, you know, like we're kind of maybe thinking like Breath of the Wild-esque, it's still going to be much more akin to open world than it's ever been before. But alrighty, I've gushed enough about the possibilities of open world, I'm sure you guys are sick of it by now. So let's go ahead and start talking about anything else that I have in this video. <laughs> Alright, the first thing that I want to talk about here with the Hunter's loadout is gonna be our feathery buddy here. He's adorable, special boy, love him. This definitely looks to be a continuation of the system that they already started with World and even further developed in Rise. It's pretty much gonna be like, like our Palamut, you know, this one's just a feathery buddy. Just looking at the way he moves around in this video, it definitely looks like mount travel is going to play a huge part in our adventures in wilds. Being able to hop through difficult terrain and glide? I'm sure that this is going to rule out any possibilities of the silk bug returning. Kind of a hater of it, sorry everybody. By the way, uh, where did he come from right here? Did he j literally jump off the spire? Maybe? Is this dude able to climb the spires and give us a bird's eye view? Maybe that's how we're going to be able to see more of the land, or maybe that's how it opens up on the map? Who knows? I am curious though, you know, they've shown a bunch of different monsters in the past, being able to mount all of the tail riders, and then we have the Palamut, the customization. I'm very curious if they're going to give us back the Palamut, or if we're going to have more than just our feathery buddy here for the monsters chosen, like for our travel. You know, like maybe a feathery buddy here glides, maybe another one is uh, a little more adept in speed for ground travel. Who knows? There's just so many possibilities to think of, and so many ways that we might be able to utilize our traveling companion. By the way, our buddy here doesn't exactly look like he's from the desert region. Maybe that's a tell that there's maybe forest region, maybe jungle region. I don't know bird ecology, don't at me. All right, and now just kind of stepping away from the possibilities of having other buddies, I really want to talk about the satchels that we have. Like the possibility of interchangeable satchels, this is no, this is not aesthetic. This is easily something that is more purpose than aesthetic. Like why is there what looks to be a light bow gun here in one of the pouches. Hey, well, time out for a moment. Editing room here. Just wanted to point out that these pendant slots here on the weapon and the sleeping bag, 
they're kind of moving on their own, so maybe we get our pendant slots back, get one for our weapon, and maybe one for our companion. Just kind of wanted to point that out. Back to the video. Are we able to perhaps swap out the pouches? You know, if you need more inventory space, boom, you can get more inventory space. You know, do you want to have a secondary weapon? There it is. Most of the time when they have something like this on the Hunter, especially with what they showed us in World, there is purpose to why it's there. Like, there's literally plenty of possibilities with this thing. Like, maybe we, we can't camp when we're out there, and maybe you can make a little makeshift camp to get, like, a full heal or something like that and pass time. Who knows? There's so many possibilities. I just can't wait to experience what they're going to give us. All right, next thing I want to pinpoint here, I am personally excited about. Very excited about. Of course, it's just kind of looking at it. We don't know, but the potential return of the scout flies and the slinger. Like, we can't say for certain that the scout flies are returning. This little thing here kind of looks like it might be the little little cage for them, but it's not lit up, so we don't know. But we can for sure look at this thing here. That looks like an updated Slinger model. We probably don't have the clutch call anymore. I'm going to assume that we don't, but the Slinger itself was just, it was fun to use. And, you know, it had a lot of, like, versatility. I, I hope it returns. It definitely looks like it is. But we literally don't know. So, you know, I hope for good news. Alrighty, the next chunk here that I want to talk about is the monsters. They've definitely kicked it up a notch. From what I can tell so far, just leaves my mind racing. There's just so much that we can see with just this whole video. There is so much possibility with monsters, overall movements, their patterns, what we get to experience. So let's dive into this deeper because there's a lot to go over. Firstly, let's acknowledge that the endemic life proper has returned. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, let's talk about these guys here. These lion, bear, rat things. These monsters are very clearly traveling in a pack. So the first thought is like, pack monsters? We get to fight monsters in packs now? I'd like to say yes, but also no. Now we might come across this in like a quest or two when hunting, but I, I don't know. I don't feel like this is going to be the new norm. Like I feel like this is far from a reasonable thing to consider when doing an encounter. These things are literally built like the Azurus and Gosarog. They're literally out here throwing small monsters at you. They're freaking huge. Like, you you can't just interweave in between these guys and, you know, kill all of them at once as they are, right? I mean, sure. Some of us could definitely do that. I'm sure a lot of us can. But it'd be pretty intense to just expect all of a sudden that the hunter has to do a four-plus fight all at once. So what does that mean? My thoughts on this? This is an event that could probably just happen when we're exploring the worlds of Monster Wilds. You know, just like an extra monster that shows up when you're doing a quest, you know, it's not a part of it. It's just a random invader, you know, Devil Joe, Rajong, all that stuff. This is maybe the new norm for that. This world is so big, why wouldn't there just be monsters moving around in packs? You know, I'd specifically like to call this packs because, you know, it's, it's all of the same monster, potentially, roaming around the region. You know, this could be them migrating to go to one area to another. Maybe they're going to a biome that's more fit for them, but they were traveling from somewhere else to do something else. Like the way that they've shown us the world in Monster Hunter World, they want things to be more immersive. They want the monsters to feel more alive. So why not have packs exist like this for certain monsters? And literally thinking about the introduction of packs like that, it makes me think about Monster Hunter 2, where they introduced seasons. It didn't really show up a whole lot or really at all for any other Monster Hunter game, but it might show up again here. Considering that packs could move from a part of the region to the other, maybe they go to hibernate, or maybe they go here to hunt for food, and we encounter more monster packs specifically like that. You know, with time and day as well also existing, maybe they go to sleep, who knows? You're out in this desert area, you know, over here, and then you're just hit by some Diablos that are just traveling around, just patrolling the area, kind of like a very specific movie that some of us may or may not have seen. Terrifying stuff. Overall, you wouldn't really want to cross these things' paths unless you were prepared, and I just think that that's a fun way to experience the world, you know? You go out to do a quest, and so much could happen. It's just so freaking exciting to think about. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. This is all that I've been able to gather from just this one trailer alone. Clearly, some things are obvious here. Some things are more so speculation. But at the end of the day, it's super fun. Like, we, we get a new glimpse of Monster Hunter, like our new Monster Hunter. We are finally getting to see what this is looking like. Now, I'd love to hear from all of you in the Monster Hunter community, those, you know, watching this video, those that are talking about this elsewhere, like, I want to know your thoughts too. So if you happen to come across this video, please express what you think about this trailer and what you expect or would like to see in this next Monster Hunter. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this first teaser trailer video thing that I'm doing an analysis for. It helps me out a lot. And follow me over on Twitch as well. We do gameplay and stuff like that. Play Monster Hunter. Oh, no. Hope to see you guys there.
And thank you so much for watching, everyone. Hope to see you guys out there in the wilds. A Rathalos.